whistle like, you know, for like 20 minutes. Oh. Yeah, for like 20 minutes. They were there talking. I guess they left. Anyway, how to be paranoid in your own home. Um, yeah, this thing here. Uh, uh, it's been there for several months. And it's... Uh, I don't know what it is, actually. It's a... Uh, well, it was like a big white, a white, you know, under there, a cystic cyst or something. If five or more gallons, you know, goes into you and it thinks unpoppable, I was sticking the needles in there and trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to cut it open with a big knife, but it didn't work. So it's just a bloody scab. Anyway, I wanted to show you briefly uh, this room here, this is the room that we don't have, that we don't get, we can't afford, and, and whatever, and if you see, I have my little workstation here, where I do, taking all kinds of things apart, hard drives, and, uh, you know, you name it, um, um, tweaking around with it. These happen to be the heads from a hard drive. They might be useful for, yeah, might be useful for, might be useful for, might be useful for. I got bags and barrels and buckets and boxes full of stuff that I couldn't throw away because I thought it might be useful for something. And it, it is. I mean, look, here, here is a, um, giant toroidal transformer that burned out from some amplifier and so I'm attempting to salvage the wire from it which already I spent like you know three hours <laughs> unwrapping <laughs> yeah it would just be easier to just go and buy the freaking wire but like I said in my last videos most of what I have comes out of the garbage. <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, oh, I left this thing on the floor. Um, hold on. I'll put this tool away. Thank you. Now, I just wanted to show you briefly this little thing that I have that I'm working on here. Uh, let's see if we can get it in the video. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sort of. All right. Meow. Meow. Uh, boring, 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 boring. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, sorry. So, what we have here. Hey, Max. Say hello to everyone, Max. Hi, Max. Oh, you're just a poopy cat. All right. Anyway, what I got here is a... Uh, I can't even see it. An Optima car battery. Can we see it from here? An Optima car battery. And I got the car battery uh, attached to my meter. So you can see that it's putting out voltage. And I got the, the car battery going from the meter to the inverter here. And you turn on the inverter and the inverter has you know, plugs for AC and for your USB and whatever. It's a 750 watt inverter. And currently, uh, I'm charging the battery with this old UPC SIM thing, which uh, runs now off of the car battery. And, um, you know, even when you... Uh, this is such a crappy video. When you unplug the charger, the battery still gives us uh, 12 point whatever and 
Um, although I haven't run the the inverter for a long period of time, like to see just how long I'm gonna get uh, out of it. Um, I have run, you know, another power supply and a monitor and a fan and, and some other junk. And um, the battery I managed to get from this nice lady with all the storage locker stuff for five bucks, which is like a good deal because car batteries, this Optima is like $250. Um, it is a glass, uh, what do they call it? Uh, AGM something glass mat. Uh, I can't remember. It's a different type of technology rather than using a, a big lead. Uh, <coughs> see, most car batteries have ah, a lead uh, core. And the lead reacts with the... Uh, what's the matter, Max? No, I don't want to play right now. The lead reacts with the sulfuric acid um, producing the ions or something like that. And then when you charge... That uses the battery. And when you charge the battery, it supposedly reverses this, this thing. Um, the ion... Whatever. Anyway, and the lead goes back to the core or something. I don't know. It's a kind of silly. And the glass mat batteries, it's a different kind of thing. It's the, the sulfuric acid is, is matted in some glass something or other, so it doesn't uh, melt the core in the same way. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, the thing about batteries... Oh, what a mess. This, this my, my little life station here is such a mess. The thing about batteries is car batteries are not really what you want when you're trying to give yourself power uh, from an inverter because uh, car batteries have a tendency to um, to wear out really quick or rather the, the amount of current they give you instead of a nice curve sort of goes uh, and then drops uh, drops off and doesn't provide the same the same level stability of current also the the charge discharge you know recharge discharge cycling um, they're not actually designed as deep cycle batteries and a deep cycle battery is a battery that you can discharge to 80 percent and then recharge to 100%. The thing about these batteries is that if you let them go to zero, they're garbage. You can throw them away. If you charge it, you know, if you discharge it all the way, it's it's you got a problem. And the glass mat technology batteries need a special charger um, because of the way they're designed. They need the, the the current to be a certain level for a certain period of time and then it has to drop to another level for a certain period of time and then it checks itself and goes back on and on. It's far more complex and far more expensive for the consumer. However, the deep cycle batteries are supposedly the ones you want for for when you have no electricity. Now my plan is, was, you know, whatever, to, to collect as many batteries as I could. Um, I managed to get one, <laughs> and it was still in good shape. Because if you get, you know, used garbage batteries, you're not going to get any power out of them. It's not worth the money. It's not worth the time. It's not worth the trouble unless somebody's giving them to you. Um, uh, you know, they're really expensive. Batteries can cost two, three hundred dollars each. You know, for a twelve volt battery that's giving you a thousand amp hour cranking voltage but you're not really uh, cranking amperage but you don't really care about the cranking amperage because you're not sitting in your car trying to turn over a frozen motor what you really care about is the the amps per hour um, anyway this battery is rated at a thousand cranking amps which uh, is enough to kill you dead if you touch the two poles in fact touching the the uh, when you connect the, the Blue the brain fog when you connect the positive and then you connect the negative from the inverter to the battery because the inverter has a capacitor that needs to be charged and discharges the battery goes splat 
Spack! And it makes sparks about this long. And the, the thing that you're, the wire that you're touching to the post of the battery actually gets spot welded to the lead post just slightly. That's how much current it is. So you got to be really careful with, with car batteries. Uh, they're no joke. They can kill you. Um, the hydrogen that leaks out while you're charging it has to be vented. That can explode. And um, you know, you got to make sure they have the right water in them. Some of them are sealed. Some of them are not. I'm going on and on and on about batteries. Nobody really cares that much about batteries except people who are working off the grid. Now, off the grid... Uh, as far as I can tell, I haven't quite done it, only for a minute. This is my Elasha pen. Is, uh, solar, solar panels, supposedly, uh, are, you can get for not too much money, even again, hundreds of dollars, but you set them up to charge from the sun to charge your batteries. And uh, you can actually, if you have enough batteries, enough panels, and enough sunlight, you can make a, a pretty good system. Some people even manage to sell power back to the power company, but uh, whatever. All I really want to do is figure out a way to develop, you know, a, a, see the thing is these things are so heavy. Car batteries weigh 40, 50 pounds, man. You're not going to throw this in a backpack and, you know. Um, Anyway, the other thing is the generator. Generator can charge the battery. Generator can run on gasoline only right now. And you can modify your generator to run on propane, uh, even wood gas, which you get from from pyroplastic uh, uh, fumes from, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but pyrophoric fumes from heating wood chips. Um, and the gas that comes off of that is flammable and you can run your generator and you can run your truck on it, you know? Um, and I find this stuff fascinating. I really wish that I had an opportunity uh, to set up this kind of stuff and work with it. Uh, not because I was forced to, but because I wanted to. Um, if you're going to live in a storage container, you know, a shipping container, and you can't get electricity, you're going to need electricity. You're going to need electricity for uh, anything electric. Um, now, I've been thinking about this a lot, that the storage thing, you know, you'd have to get the 100-pound the tanks of propane delivered. I'm not sure how much they are. I know when you buy the 20-pound the tank of propane, the tank itself is like $40 deposit, and the propane inside of it is about 15 bucks or 10 bucks or something, I don't know, I forget. Anyway, it's a lot cheaper than buying uh, one pound propane tanks. And the propane heater that we have, a one pound propane tank lasts for six hours on low and three hours on high, approximate. So you figure, you know, t t 12 hour cycle of hot, uh, you know, a 14 hour cycle of hot, you're gonna need a lot of little tanks of propane. It's gonna be very expensive to get through a winter month. Um, so the 100 pound thing might be the deal. You could run your generator off of it. You could get a, a propane refrigerator that they have in campers. You can get, I think, even a propane air conditioner. I'm not sure, I think so. Um, the thing about propane that I don't like is the stuff they put in the liquefied natural gas, the LP, the propane, whatever, um, that lets you smell it because it's it's an odorless, tasteless gas, but the stuff that they put in it to make you smell it is just horrendous, and I think that's what makes us sick. That, and if there's not enough oxygen um, to burn, then it begins to make carbon monoxide. When there's enough oxygen, it burns it makes carbon dioxide and water vapor so um, you know anyway uh, oh, I'm so shattered scattered and and whatever this morning um, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep the, the, this thing is making all this noise uh, I gotta go turn that down anyway I thought I would share my my I don't know, 
understand. Anyway, uh, oh, that's my story. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Uh, I'm trying to get this little, this little camera that this wonderful person gave me. Um, thank you. To I'm trying to figure out how to make it do its thing. Uh, I was just outside walking around trying to record a, a video uh, to see if it works or not. I mean, it works, but when I'm outside, I couldn't see the light, and so I wasn't sure if it was recording or not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's transferred it all the way. I don't know if it's, you know, this has got to be boring to you people. So, anyway, thanks for watching. God bless you. Take care.